नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू एन स्पेशल लाइव फोन इन प्रोग्राम माय नेम इज़ तनवी खुराना एंड दिस इज़ द प्रोग्राम फॉर निष्ठा 2.0 पॉइंट ओ फॉर सेकेंडरी लेवल लेट मी जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू निष्ठा निष्ठा इज द नेशनल इनिशिएटिव फॉर स्कूल हेड्स एंड टीचर्स होलिस्टिक एडवांसमेंट एंड आर टूडेज टॉपिक इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग सेकेंडरी स्टेज लर्नर्स सो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेरीज प्लीज फील फ्री टू रीच आउट टू आस एंड सेंड योर क्वेरीज थ्रू आर ई मेल आई डी विच इज निष्ठा डॉट हेल्प डेस्क एट द रेट सी आई ई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन यू वॉचिंग आस ऑन पी एम ई विद्या चैनल्स एंड ऑल्सो ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल इन द लाइव चैट बॉक्स यू कैन राइट डाउन योर क्वेश्चन योर फीडबैक योर कॉमेंट्स कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स एनी थिंग यू वॉन्ट एंड सेंड इट टू आस सो वी हैव टू एक्सपर्ट्स विद आस हु आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू सर्टन थिंग्स अबाउट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द सेकेंडरी स्टेज लर्नर्स सो लेट्स मीट आर एक्सपर्ट्स वी हैव डॉक्टर श्रद्धा धिवल वेलकम मैम Ma'am is an assistant professor from Department of Educational Psychology and Foundations of Education, NCERT, New Delhi, and we also have Miss Deep Mala. Welcome, ma'am. Namaste. Ma'am is an assistant professor again from Department of Educational Psychology and Foundations of Education, NCERT, New Delhi. So this is the course five, and uh, in August we did course one, two, and three, and uh, in this month, that's September, we'll do course four, five, and six. Today is uh, the course five, and uh, let's begin with this discussion with Shraddha, ma'am, and I would like to ask her to, ma'am, introduce the topic to our viewers and uh, also uh, inform us about the outline of this course number five. first of all very good evening to my dear teachers students and parents uh, today's uh, module the title of the module is understanding secondary stage learners we'll open uh, we'll see the title on the powerpoint see now uh, this the title of the module is understanding secondary stage learners now we all are aware that yesterday our honorable prime minister has inaugurated shikshak par which will be there from 7 to 17 september now in that uh, one of the session our former director professor rajput said that it the teacher does not teach it is the child who learns and very aptly he has said it is a big message he is giving to our teachers that as a teachers we have seen for the so many years so every year we uh, try to teach hundreds of students some of them become scientists some of them become social scientists some of them becomes leaders and in spite of many efforts some of the students cannot do anything they do, they are not able to learn so this is very very essential for us you see it is it is not the teachers who teach the child it is the learner who learns so in that context it becomes very very necess- necessary that we must understand the learner first ki what are the abilities of that learner what are the interests what is the what are the uh, motivation that child is having what kind of efforts that child is doing and that we need to understand at preparatory level foundational level middle level and at the secondary level also but the uh, secondary level becomes very very important because that is the uh, age of uh, rapid changes biological changes emotional changes as well as social changes also so our this module 5 is focusing on understanding the secondary level learners so we'll see the what are the objectives of this module are so this module uh, focuses on uh, building understanding of teachers about guidance and counseling approach to understand the secondary stage learners recognize the need for guidance and counseling approach while dealing with the students as well as reflect on personal qualities of a teacher which are required for uh, integrating guidance approach to uh, school teaching the our um, uh, course outline is it contains the understanding adolescent learners uh, need of guidance in schools role of uh, peers role of teachers as a guidance functionary guidance concept process and types as well as counsel, uh, counseling concept scope and limitations uh, i would uh, request uh, uh, deepmala ma'am to take forward the first uh, 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 objective 
that is understanding adolescent learners at secondary stage. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, yeah, uh, ma'am, ne bahut achhe se she has begun with a very appropriate level that it is very important, very crucial to understand our learners, secondary stage learners who are adolescents. And in fact, ma'am, adolescents. When I was reading, go, seeing the module, na, so that was a very you know that was a stage when I reminded myself, and I'm sure when I asked this question to our viewers, that think of that time when they were adolescent. So they might respond this question that. Uh, that was very they were very different at that stage all of us might say that we were very energetic at that stage we are very risk taking right adventurous in nature we are full of so much of energies right now we can say when we see at our adolescent learners that they are so impulsive they don't listen to us but if we go back and remind of our time we will be we were also same so why why so it is very important for us to understand understand first why they are behaving in a manner that they have never behaved earlier when they don't behave in future when we see at us we don't behave in the same manner as we used to do while we in the adolescent so when i went through sciences and i go through the you know reproductive stages and uh, development physical development i could understand oh that is the reason our children are going through so much of the physical changes in the inside of them they are going through lots of reproductive development so it is a hormone development a hormone driven behavior i can say but then i went through the psychology and now i can understand completely that it is not as easy to understand our adolescent learner they are not as simple learners as the kids at the middle level they were they are now going through so much of the changes inside and so much of the pressure from the outside career related to career our parents want us to excel in our studies now it becomes suddenly at the class a 9th and 10th it becomes so important right and uh, our all our kids are so much you know influenced by how i look how i behave in front of my peers how my peers view of myself so there are so many things inside pressure and outside pressure they are so confused and they are going through so many challenges and unless until we don't understand what sort of challenges they are going inside and what sort of expectation they are facing from the outside not from the career related but also from the peers attention seeking behavior right there is a very famous psychologist erickson he talks about independence theory of psychosocial development he says ki our kids seek so much of the approval from their peers at this stage that they do they act in a manner that they never want to in fact they smoke you, then you can understand why they are indulging into the substance abuse kind of the behavior why they are bullying they by sometimes they know that what they are doing is not right but peer influences are very important so this module will talk about all these things in much detail and it is very important to go through each of these things because it is not only that i can understand the children are going through physical development that's why it is behaving he is behaving or she is behaving in the manner no it might be because of this but it might be social pressure it might be the emotional changes because of the hormones in the side their body they are going through in one moment they are so happy and elated but another another moment they feel so low they don't feel the energy to do the work and we say ki you are so lazy they are not lazy might be their mood they are going through the mood swings and similarly there are other cognitive changes their brain is still developing yes it is also going it's not only physical social emotional and uh, they are going through cognitive changes they are going through moral development right till now our kids were, were behaving in a manner where we say what is right or what is wrong right there is a different theory about the th kolbach's theory of moral development he says till the middle level of schooling children Bill, children has a level of reasoning they feel which is right when we say good children do in the manner they in the manner which is approved by the other when we say that it is good it is bad they behave but now the children are growing they are moving towards the adult adulthood they think in a different manner they understand that yes stealing is sometimes not approved by others but it might be there some might be some personal reason behind a behavior this kind of the behavior of the child so abstract kind of the moral reasoning they are developing so on the all fronts they are 
growing. So they are going through so many changes. Our children complain that they are misunderstood. Most of the time they are misunderstood. They, that might be true. We require little more understanding, little more patience to understand our adolescent elders. Ma'am? Okay. Yeah. Can I take forward? Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, Deepmala ma'am madam has uh, very nicely explained about uh, the need of guidance as well as understanding the adolescents also. First of all, we would like to see through the PowerPoint what uh, we want, why we want to understand the adolescent learner. Dipmala Madam has explained this because there are rapid biological changes and there is a transition from childhood to adulthood. So uh, till child, uh, childhood, the child is learning through concrete uh, images, through concrete examples. Now the child is understanding the abstract as well as complex thinking. Like uh, whenever we are teaching in the classroom or at home also, we used to provide the child a concrete things for understanding. But uh, now the child is understanding the abstract concept like justice, peace, uh, social contact, that the child has uh, started understanding. And then suddenly we think, see that okay, till the uh, child is fifth and sixth standard, the child wants to be with the parents. Whenever we are going out, the child says that I want to come with you. But when the child goes to the secondary level, he suddenly says that no, you go, I will stay at home. The child, want, the child does not want to accompany the parents. He wants to be with his friends and friends become more important uh, for him. And naturally for uh, uh, maintaining that friendship, the child goes uh, beyond certain limits for maintaining that relationship. Then identity issues. The child wants to identi uh, form the identity and uh, then the socioeconomic status and the things he has, what kind of a clothes he is wearing, what kind of a bike he is uh, riding, all those things become important for the child. Then the body image issues also matters because the uh, children for uh, being with their friends, they, they want to look good. Now we uh, in our country, we have that. Uh, uh, stereotype images of beauty like girl has to be fair only and the body uh, boys should be masculine so they here they try to imitate their friends and sometimes the media people and body image issues are also very important if they are uh, not fair then they uh, feel low self esteem so that is also uh, a major concern in this age the ch child looks after then very rightly the mala madam uh, explained the moral uh, reasoning the child understands what is good and if it is appreciated by the parents then the child understand them. yes my parent have approved this so this is the thing which need which i should do then the, the uh, for the uh, why this uh, guidance is required in the school that uh, through ppt we will see this so we need guidance uh, uh, here because um, if we see that the objective of the education and guidance are almost same and the approach for the guidance helps the teacher to achieve the objective of education. Now guidance minded teacher we will talk it uh, about uh, later but the guidance is a broader uh, education is the broader term and guidance come under that. Now why do we need this guidance in schools because uh, in this age adolescents be, uh, uh, earlier we have said that the, the, this is the period of identity formation and they want to maintain their uh, body image, they are concerned about their conformity with the friends. So sometimes what happens for seeking the attention of their uh, others and particularly the friends they uh, uh, do something which, uh, which seeks the attention of the friends. And that, that leads to sometimes doing some things which are not appropriate. And uh, this is the time they should learn about how to express their emotions in a socially approvable manner. So that, uh, this is also a very important thing. When they are angry, how they should behave with the others, how, how, why they should not shout at other children, or why they should listen to the teachers. So this kind of expression of, of emotions, it is very important for learning at this stage. Then academic as well as other expectation from the parents, teachers as well as from the friends. Now many a times we say that, uh, we see that the unrealistic 
expectation are there from the parents uh, in terms of all uh, whether it is academic expectation a career expectation uh, whether personal social relationship parents have a lot of expectation the child should not go out of home after uh, 7 o'clock they should have uh, they should not have such kind of a friends or academic excellence also we see the many parents say that you should get the 99 percent of marks so these kind of unrealistic expectation also uh, the children need to uh, tackle with and naturally they go, go through very lot of anxiety and stress because of that and then peer influence and peer pressure the madam has explained it very nicely and the risk taking behavior like to maintain the conformity with the group the children sometimes take those challenges and this is the age for the, for them for the experimenting and the experiencing so so they try it and sometimes they take this risk taking behavior and uh, succumb to the subst substance abuse and that is also uh, i mean a major uh, concern in most of the schools so for tackling and dealing with those things we need to have a guidance in our schools so in the next uh, uh, then we okay. aap kise bologe <laughs> <laughs> ma'am no. uh, need of guidance uh, you actually yeah. informed us very well that mm. it is very much required mm. but uh, peers even if we talk about them there's a major role played by peers would you like to throw some light on that yeah we already have talked a little bit of it mm. and uh, yes i want to highlight one major point about it that we are talking about the changes within the students and we are also sharing that yes that uh, i already have shared that uh, there is a psychosocial developmental theory which also such confirms this kind of behavior among the adolescent that they are seeking independence that makes them driven little away from their parents right they mm. rebel mm. this they parents say why do you cut your hair like that they say no i like it i want mm. to do it they are seeking their identity right mm. similarly they that peer relationship that word i already shared suddenly become important but the purpose of sharing this is not that we justify all kind of the behavior by the child but we mean it that if you understand that you will be able to harness that kind those kind of the changes within the person na, in the for the right things right mm -hmm. so when we are talking about peer pressure and peer influences yes they are here so why not why don't we utilize it for the right things right Mm -hmm. Yes, pe so peer pressure is not only negative, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It is also positive sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. I seek attention from the peers. So mm -hmm. a teacher can divide the activities in a manner where it becomes very important that I will be the hero of the class when I score higher or when I really concentrate into the classes. Mm -hmm. I will be a well appreciated by the teachers and the others if I behave in a certain manner in the class. Mm -hmm. I will be there, you know, we can use it in a positive manner that uh, that transformation going into themselves, right? Mm. So, but rather than that, if their peers are using that thing that as ma'am has shared, substance abuse, oh, if you want to be the hero, if you want to prove yourself, just try a, try a cigarette, why don't you, child will do that, right? Mm. But we have to walk in their shoes, that's why we really need to understand them and then we should suggest that, it should not be like suggestive. We should open the avenues in front of that, that it's okay, it, I understand that uh, your, pay, your peers taunt about you, they taunt about your looks, they don't like that you are little obese or you are fat, but you have an identity, you should adopt a healthy lifestyle rather. Mm. So rather than be suggestive, we should walk along with them and we should understand that they, this is important, it should not be like uh, parents do na that uh, this is wrong what are you doing you don't understand you are starving yourself then students already become like okay you please shut up you don't understand me hmm. they, they say you don't understand it is very important hmm. how i look this is my karina kapoor style this is uh, like size zero image was very very yes. good right very so parents don't understand they are old hmm. right so it becomes like two walls facing each other and hmm. did, the house become the conflicts so right area is huh? it like this depends on the student or the uh, adolescent how to take it uh, how to take peer pressure as is in the negative sense or in the positive it sense it depends on the relationship we are managing with our students we are managing with our kids we are managing with our sons or daughters okay right they are under peer influences in most right? cases so, what happens so if we, if you allow them in certain cases you can allow them to have a certain kind of the hairstyle that is not harmful mm. then they will also follow 
follow you, they will also understand that you understand them. First mm. importance is relationship building. Mm. When they understand that you understand, then they will also understand that what you are saying might be something good for you, mm. right? So mm. if you keep on challenging those kids, they will also keep challenging you. They are also seeking identity as I shared, right? Mm. So peer influences is not always bad, it is also positive. You need to understand that peer pressure is here, mm. but uh, you have to really, you cannot, you can go back and empathize with them. You can understand because you already have passed the adolescent. They have not gone through that. Yes. Everything is new for them. Mm -hmm. So you really have to walk with them. You really have to allow them for certain things. Mm -hmm. You really have to be flexible. It's okay to eat pizza sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And have mm -hmm. a party together. But it's not okay to have it all the days. Okay. Then it is unhealthy. Right. So basically, mm. students, uh, adolescents have to adjust yeah. with their new uh, yeah. phase, and even parents have to adjust. They have to first understand. understand. They have to first understand. Here, actually, it's I would like to yeah. share my experience, yeah. my own experience mm. here. Actually, uh, we were transferred to Delhi, and at that time, my youngest son was in eighth standard. So uh, when uh, he took, uh, used to study in Kendri with Dallas. So uh, when uh, we came here, so after some time, what happened? The uh, eight, seven, eight students in his class, suddenly those who were not able to pass in six and seven standard, suddenly they started passing, all of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, two, three unit test, the teacher has seen that. And then half yearly also, all of them, those, those seven, eight uh, backbenchers, they uh, started uh, passing. Mm -hmm. Then that uh, teacher has observed that what my son used to do, he, he used to complete his paper and then he used to circulate to them. Because we were new here in Delhi and he wanted uh, friends to and so yes to, to conformity with those uh, friends and he has certain leadership qualities in him. Okay. So he wanted to be a leader of the entire class. Mm -hmm. So the uh, children who are uh, average or those, those, those children listen uh, immediately to the monitor. Mm -hmm. But these kind of students, they don't listen to the monitor. Mm -hmm. So he wanted that the entire class should listen to him, entire class should be his friend. So he started showing his question paper answer sheets to them. But his teacher realized, class teacher, and she called me and she said that Ki your son is uh, doing this way, she, this, is, this is not right. But as a parent, I cannot go to the school and ask those students not to do this. Mm -hmm. And if I ask my son also not to show this uh, uh, answer sheet to them, then he also cannot do it. Mm -hmm. But the teacher has supported him and the problem was over. Mm -hmm. Whenever he used to be with mm -hmm. those children, she used to call, call him in the staff room or she used to give some mm -hmm. another uh, work. So th then those uh, students realize that, you know, the teacher is not approving his friendship with us. And gradually then uh, he came over. So for that conformity with the uh, students, mm -hmm. the students can go to any level. Mm -hmm. But it is the uh, teacher who identifies this. The observer teachers notices this and it supports also. Mm -hmm. Because she was seeing that uh, further the bright child will uh, get carried away with those students mm -hmm. and all those she has realized and she has helped him. And because of this, uh, he could come out of that. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate and thank that teacher very much. So teacher's role plays a very important role mm -hmm. in understanding the children and uh, guiding them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. This is a perfect example of relationship building. building. And yes. you can see if uh, a parent is not sensitive then other things could happen. It has begin from the question paper yes. sharing, but students could bully the child that if you want to be our group, mm. and it happens among the classes, mm. na, you have to do these things for us. But mm. the teacher and the parent, parent was very sensitive. Mm. Rather than making halla over the child, mm. right? They walk with the child, they understood the need of the child and mm. not let him misuse, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. But do all teachers behave like that? Or uh, um, uh, they could be the case that teacher might have complained mm. to the principal. Mm. Actually, the majority majority of the teacher has the concern for the children. Mm. But we, through this module and through this guidance and counseling course, we want all our teachers should be guidance minded. Absolutely. And that is the efforts we are putting in. So we will see here the role of the teachers in guidance and counseling. Okay. In the Through PowerPoint, we will like to see this. Because we know that the, uh, no, the students do not learn what the teacher is teaching. The students learn what the teacher does in the class. Mm. So the role of a teacher is, and as well as the parents, 
it is very very important but ma'am, if we talk about the earlier generation and if we talk about today, things have changed. Earlier it was not the case. Now we can see uh, the maturity in teachers and uh, they building this strong relationship with the mm -hmm. students. But uh, earlier the teachers were uh, not that familiar as in uh, they used to teach in a class but one-on-one uh, -on -one bond was not too common. Uh, would you agree to that? No, I am absolutely don't. not. I, okay. I absolutely not. But things have I changed. Had, uh, no. I I, uh, all the levels I always had a good teachers mm -hmm. and because of them I am a teacher who want to be a teacher mm -hmm. and I like I want to I became a teacher and I want to be a teacher mm -hmm. all along I don't have any high expectation because at all levels whether it's a primary secondary mm -hmm. university level as well as beard colleges mm -hmm. as well as PhD level mm -hmm. I had a very good teacher and uh, I feel uh, I mean fortunate for that and I want uh, me to be like that only and I, I uh, whenever I do the training programs, I uh, motivate my teachers in the same way. Ki, uh, you are here because of one teacher, mm -hmm. because we all have that one teacher, because of them we are what we are. Yes. So the, we expect them to be that one teacher mm -hmm. who shapes the personality of that child. Mm -hmm. right. And this is something which my teacher used to give the example to us while in mm -hmm. the teacher training. Mm -hmm. That it is kind of a nuclear reaction, it is a kind of a chain mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. One teacher, 50 students every year and 50 may say be even 10 teachers, good teachers, 10 more. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a nuclear fusion or fission, fission you can say. So, yes, mm -hmm. and that's why mm -hmm. NCRT and we through NISTA we are tra trying mm -hmm. our level base to see that the, we build this culture of learning in our teachers. Mm -hmm. So role of a teacher as well as parents is equally important Absolutely. because the, the culture of learning is built at home and as well as school also. Mm -hmm. If the parents are considerate, they develop a conducive environment at home for the learning, the child mm -hmm. learns. If the, in the classroom the culture of learning is developed, the child learns. After that exchange of ideas, the exchange of ideas also plays a, a very big role because just the way the uh, teacher's philosophy is, the philosophy and psychology of the, that teacher is reflected in the classroom and that makes the big difference. And similarly, the same thing goes for the parent also. So it is very, very important that what kind of a philosophy and psychology that teacher and parents have, and uh, we need to have a correct philosophy and psychology of our life. Thought processes. Now we, ha we are uh, learning, uh, uh, we are seeing, the discussing these uh, thought processes. P uh, whatever the child does, if, if it is approved, it gets strengthened. And if it is disapproved, it gets weakened. So that kind of a thought processes, are whatever the thought processes we are using in the classroom at home, that shapes the personality of the child. Home and school also helps in building the character. The kind of a character we see in the classroom and home, the uh, child uh, by imitation and observation, the most of the characters are imitated by the child. Then shaping of personality, instilling confidence, the confidence uh, instill the kind of uh, experiences child gets in home as well as in the classroom that helps him to build the confidence. If, when the child is making a mistake and uh, as a parent or teacher we say that uh, no issue, uh, the, we, as a human being we make the mistake but next time you correct it. So that uh, motivates the child to learn. At the same time when the child does any mistake and we say that you uh, uh, you have done the mistake, you are, you are of no use, then the confidence of the child gets reduced. So the, the instilling confidence is also uh, uh, our responsibility as a parent as well as a teacher. Then we are the mentors for the child and uh, last but not the least role model. We, uh, I always say that uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, just say, uh, the Tanvi was saying that ki the teachers differ like uh, that kind of a thing. But I always say that uh, uh, generally people say ki nowadays the children don't look after their parents when they are old. Mm -hmm. But I say if as a parent you are looking after your parent, there is no uh, chance that your children will not look after you. Mm -hmm. So this is the, I mean uh, con uh, this is a continuum. If you are looking after your parents, your children will surely look after you. And the, uh, the, uh, initially also I said that the students do what the teacher does. They don't do what the teacher is teaching. 
So we are the role models. What kind of a society we want in future? We have to that uh, do that social modeling so that we will have the children the way we want in future. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, now, um, uh, Shraddha ma'am has already talked about the need of guidance mm -hmm. in schools and even the role of teachers in guidance uh, functionary. But if we talk about the concept and the process and even the types of guidance, can you tell something about us? Yeah, sure. Because it is not as simple as we listen to the word guidance. Mm -hmm. The word layman use this word as the term of the suggestion, guidance, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we all of us are guidance functionary. If we talk about the normal people language, but guidance, yes, it's not as easy as it is appears. It's not suggestion. It's a technical process in itself. Mm -hmm. That's why we are taking this module here. That is why there are training for this purpose because mm -hmm. uh, it goes in these steps. It is very, very technical, but moving further about the guidance, I want to talk about the teacher as the guidance functionary man. I want to just break the sequence of this thing. Uh, can no, we see no, we will go this. Uh, we have a uh, PowerPoint in a sequence. Okay. We can stick to that. Okay, this we can see. Okay, that. fine. Okay, fine. Let's come back to the guidance. Okay, the, what is this thing? If we see at this concept, it, that, it, uh, it is written over here that helps students to recognize and realize their potential, right? But uh, why I wanted to talk about who are the guidance people? Mm -hmm. Actually, every teacher and every paper, per parent want to help their students, their kids to recognize their potential. And they say, Ki we want, we are not saying anything wrong, but they don't understand how their life is so important, but they are doing the other things. Mm -hmm. Actually, children also understand that their life is very important. They also understand their career is very important, and you also right know that but why it happened that kind of the you know suggestions you are providing to your child is not reaching them mm -hmm. they are not ready to accept it okay. why they are not following you because if you see at the second point over here because guidance in itself is a process mm -hmm. attending exploring goal setting and intervention mm -hmm. but what we do in real life we start with the intervention we give the ready-made solution to our kids that if you sit with the child now you will also start cheating right mm. if you don't study harder now you will fail if you don't listen to your teacher now you will get this thing so we start with the intervention and we say ki we are doing the right thing even if we are trying hard and hard our kids are not understanding they are not following us they are very stubborn they are very rebellious right mm. but it is a process which has to go in this kind of the sequence which is written over here attending exploring goal setting and in intervention the first step written over here is attending you have to really attend to your ch child without judging without interrupting without asking anything and attending is not only physically sitting with the person but it is also maintaining a relationship sometimes without a word when we look into the con eyes of the person mm -hmm. right eye contact in itself makes a strong relationship with the person right yes. My posture, it says a lot about myself. I am looking at the person, I am listening, I am pretending to listen because I am looking at my watch. Oh, ha ha ha, I am to But the person will tap, ki are interested, nahi hai, isko jaldi hai kahi ki, to they will start interrupt, they will start ki, thik hai, khadam karo. But, so attending is something which is also about maintaining eye contact. It is also about your gestures, right? Whether I am leaning forward, or I am like, uh, I'm, I'm listening to you. This is like my posture is saying something else and my words are saying something else. That is kind of a break into the relationship with the child, with the, any person. This is very important in any relationship building. Your communication, right? And my child is saying, I am very disturbed, I am very disturbed, I, and I start shouting, Ki tum, mujhe, mujhe pata laga tum ladka raya. right? That, that is kind of an interruption. That is again, not the right communication. Communication we always do and all the time. But are we really doing doing the right communication? Even if you nod, you don't say your child is very much in hurry or he has lot to speak, let him speak, but you can nod, you can say hum. That also say that also shows that yes, you are listening to the child. The mm -hmm. first step is attending. Attending without interrupting, without 
any judgment without anything else, without your own priorities. Sometimes I have my own priorities. So, in case you have any priorities, you say to the child, I'll talk to you, give me five minutes. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are making, you are not making a relationship, you are breaking a relationship. Your child might feel I, it's very important for me, but the teacher is not listening to me, mm -hmm. right? He might be bullied, he came to you, but you are not listening, right? Mm -hmm. You have your own genuine reason, you can convey to the child, give mm -hmm. me five minutes, give me ten minutes, or I'll talk to you into the next class, I have, an, I have a class this time, right? So that is the first step, attending. The second step is exploration. Now you have listened everything, you know what the child want to say, what kind of the emotion child is going through, through his world and through his body language. Now the second step comes exploring. You can ask, for example, a child comes to you that I am very disturbed, my marks are not good and you start, padai nahi ki yogi. To wo apne interruption jo kiya tha, abhi nahi kiya hai. Now you can ask, acha number come hai, let's see. Kya tum regular padh rahe the? The child may say, no, I might get sick. Right? Or child might say, yes, I was, I was studying very well, I was studying very hard. Then you might find out ki is there anything lacking in the study skills. All the child might say nothing, but you can see from the body language that there is something else. The child is going through some emotional trauma that shows in itself that through the body language. So you ask the appropriate question because you already have observed, listen to the child. There comes the part of the questioning exploration about the child. Now you know the real reason behind the problem of the child, right? We generally tap on the problem, but now we have to tap on the problem through cutting on the causes, right? So now you know the cause, so tap on the right cause. If the child is going through the emotional trauma and you are dealing with the study skills, then you might not be able to give the right intervention to the child. That's why you are suggesting, but the child was not also listening. You were not listening, the child was not listening. Mm -hmm. So that was wrong. So now you have decided, you have really understood what the real problem with the child is. Now you set the goal for the child. First, I think my child is really, really very frustrated or very anxious because the marks has come really low. So your first goal should be to make the child comfortable, to make the child really at ease so that the child can work with you. So your first goal is dealing with the emotion, the second, child, the second goal is to help the child enhance the scope and for that purpose you also might require different type of sub goals. So now you will set the goals which is exactly needed by your child. Same problem can have different n number of causes and can have n number of goals. So don't take a look at it, don't uh, fit the same shoes in the, everybody has, wears a different kind of the shoes. Yes. So everybody has, everybody has the feet but has different sizes. Mm. So even the simplest problem in the school the child faces, study, poor score can have n number of reasons. First understand the reason, then find out the so, uh, goals and then give the solution. Uh, then child will also understand and child will find the solution also and will feel the relief. So this is how the process of guidance, it is not like suggestion, giving suggestion to the child. Ma'am, can we come back mm. to the PPT? Yeah. Mm. And then came about the guidance. Is it the same thing for everyone? There are different kind of the guidance as we can see here in the types. First is educational, which is most required in the schools, educational for the purpose of academic challenges, for the purpose of career awareness, for the purpose of, child might come and say ki, I want to make a career in mathematics, but I don't have the awareness about different avenues. Mm. So that is not a problem, that is, but that is a, that is where child might need the guidance, right? To the vocational, that comes for the career part and personal social, where the child is unable to make the adjustment either with the peers or with the siblings or in the family or maybe with the, with the himself or herself. A child who is, or a girl, as I shared the example of size zero, a girl who is not very happy with the body size, oh my god, I am fat, I am fat, she is starving, right? The real reason is poor self-esteem, but first you have to really help the child so that she will eat the healthy, you know, a healthy mind resides in a healthy body itself, yes. right? Very common saying. Hmm. So, 
for there are personal social guidances there are so many so many issues a child may go internally right by body image is one thing it might be why i'm feeling little a uh, lots of mood swing this thing it might be that uh, there is certain hormonal disturbance you can refer the child to the doctor itself it's not always solution is with me the solution may lie with someone else but as a guidance functionary i mean required to be well aware of the things okay ma yeah. I, i wanted to ask mm. you when you uh, say doctor here so by doctor you mean uh, a proper doctor or a counselor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist it depends on the child as i said here the um, in mood swings if there is a hormonal disbalance then we need a physical doctor mm. in case some certain kind of identity issues we require a psychologist or psychiatrist in case of uh, something else then the child maybe something adjustment issues only but i feel really low about it i have a real conflict with my friends then i need a counselor Okay. So it depends on the cause. That's what I said, na. Hmm. Different problems. So that uh, hmm. uh, teacher takes the call. Yeah. Sometimes it can be doctor also. Yeah, yeah Malam, I said so. Yeah. Huh, because, it can be anyone. Huh, hmm. No, when we write on the blackboard and the child is copying, the many a times the children uh, they say shrink their eyes, hmm. or Typical many a issues, times yeah. they see on the notebook of the other child, or they go in the front and write. Hmm. So these kind of things only uh, teacher can notice. Right. the child and is not able to see that is a yes, generally we complain mm. ki cheating kar raha hai but i problem hai yes mm. because the uh, what we see we only know what is there mm. but when the child is not able to see he doesn't know the other child is able to see mm. so when uh, when our this uh, diploma course training itself i was sitting with uh, the mm. child because when we go for the observation we sit on the last bench okay. so there one uh, child she was copying from the other other child mm. so i asked her ki why are you uh, copying from uh, her uh, notebook why are you not writing what the teacher is writing on the blackboard she said ma'am i am mujhe dikhta nahi hai then i uh, i wrote in her diary that uh, for her parents you show it to the i i specialist mm-hmm. she is not able to read mm-hmm. so these are the things we we are not able to see at home that's right mm-hmm. so this we need to uh, as a teacher this is our responsibility to tell the uh, parents to show it to the doctor so sometimes it is physician also mm-hmm. right. for the psychologist for the mm-hmm. uh, handling uh, little little things mm-hmm. like uh, bullying mm-hmm. peer pressure these mm. kind of things our school counselors can handle it mm. but some major issues like the depression or suicidal tendency these kind of issues uh, require some special help mm. okay. so the teacher or the school counselor can refer to the people who are specialist in that mm. area mm. so that is the meaning of that uh, referring to the people mm. okay so as the mala ma'am uh, very uh, rightly uh, uh, explained the process of attending exploring goal setting as a inter- uh, and intervention yeah. so this is a process it is not one time activity yes. because uh, we say that uh, the guidance and counseling the uh, for so many years it is going on in the school but there yeah. is no difference the children are doing this and that yeah. because this is the process is required times yeah. and time as well as a continuous effort yeah. so basically what the um, guidance help guidance helps the child yeah. to recognize and realize its potential and to develop yeah. fully and uh, by doing this the child becomes more happier and more uh, productive person in the society yeah. so you have seen this process as well as type as well as guidance also mm-hmm. now we will see ki how a teacher can become a guidance minded we since beginning we are see, we are mm-hmm. saying that ki we want our teachers mm-hmm. to be guidance minded mm-hmm. so what is this the guidance minded teacher the major difference between a teacher who is not uh, guidance minded and who is guidance minded is that the teacher who is not guidance minded focuses on completing his syllabus first and the gu- the teacher who is guidance minded who focuses on the child first the guidance minded teacher uh, want to understand what kind of a emotional status the child is having is he physically well today is he mentally well today is there the child is having any problem at home so priority in the process of teaching the priority of the guidance minded teacher is the learner mm-hmm. and the the teacher who is not guidance minded the priority for that person is completion of the syllabus mm-hmm. so when a teacher wants to become a guidance minded teacher what is most important first of all understanding your own self mm-hmm. knowing well say what are mm-hmm. my strength and what are my weaknesses 
So every person is a bundle of some strength as well as some weaknesses. Mm. So we need to accept that, yes, this is my strength, this is my weakness. Uh, every person has the ability, so out of 25, 24 can be strength, but one mm. can be weakness that everyone has. Though teachers should be aware about that, the first, the teacher should accept, yes, I have this weakness and that kind of uh, awareness is required. The second thing is that the teacher has to be mentally healthy. When the teacher is mentally healthy, then only she will be able to provide the mental support to the children. So this is a also a very important thing. Mm. Then the ability of critical thinking also has to be there. Now the in many places we see the critical ability of critical thinking means inclusiveness. That there are uh, different uh, kinds and different level of students we have in our classroom. So that we need to have that ability of including all the children whether it is physically challenged, mentally challenged, different socio-economic backgrounds, different religions, different castes, we need to have the ability of critically thinking and including all those in our teaching and learning process. Then ability of understanding others, yes, whatever I know that is right, but what the other people know that is also right. So taking the other people's perspective that is very, very yeah. important. Then teacher has to be very sensitive what the child is feeling that sensitivity has to be the the teacher has to be empathetic mm. the objectivity the, the the no teacher should be a subjective mm. whatever the um, evaluation is goes on whether the children's participation or preparation of assignment or checking mm. of uh, evaluation of papers the child the teacher has to be objective then the genuineness the uh, students uh, trust the teacher only when they find that the teacher is genuine. The teacher uh, genuineness is what? What we think. The same thing we are speaking and the same thing is there in our action that is called the genuineness. And if the children see this, they trust the teachers and then they are ready to share their uh, issues with the uh, teacher. If they say, see that the teacher said something and does something, the teacher uh, students do not develop the trust and then they do not share the problems with the teacher. Hmm. And as the Mala ma'am has said that attentiveness is very important and it involves active listening. Mm. So the listening should be active that uh, it should not be uh, superlative or just selective listening, it has to be attentive. Whatever we are listening, we should listen to from our heart, our eyes as well as with the ears. And these are the qualities we help that help the teacher to become a guidance manager. Mm. And one more important thing is the the teacher to become guidance minded is following the basic principles of guidance. Mm. Now there are certain basic principles in guidance we follow that is guidance is a universal need. Mm. Everyone needs guidance. Mm. So since childhood to old age everyone needs guidance. But there are certain stages like adolescence age where we require more guidance. Nowadays young people and uh, the old age people also are requiring more guidance but education is the universal need. And then we start the guidance with understanding with the human nature is basically good. So if we want to be a guidance minded teacher, the, we have to begin with that all children are good, whether they are doing mischievous or otherwise, but we begin the guidance with human nature is basically good. Then we believe that each individual is unique and each individual has a unique potential and we need to identify that and nurture it. Then next is all individual are worthy of respect. It is not only that higher authorities are worthy of respect, each person, each individual, each child is worthy of respect. Then the uh, all individuals need freedom of choice. Now we uh, need to evaluate ourselves how much freedom we are giving to our children. At home all the time we are, uh, uh, the parents are telling the child you have to take this team, you have to become a doctor, you have to become engineer. In the school also all the time we are uh, dictating our children what to do. The very less freedom of choice we are giving and that is against the human nature. The next very important, all individuals have the capability to adjust. Every individual has the ability of adjustment. Every person is trying, whether in the classroom or home or in the institution, every person is trying his level best. Now whenever we go to a uh, uh, party or uh, birthday party, 
So we say that all people are talking to each other. So some of them, when as soon as we enter the party, they start talking. Some of them, after uh, half an hour, they start talking. Some of them, when the party is over, they start talking to each other. But everybody is trying to adjust. So every person has uh, ability to adjust. Everyone requires a different time for adjustment that we need to give in the school. Actually, we need to give the time for the child to adjust. And then the this is the responsibility of the home school as well as society to help the individual to re, uh, realize his or her potential. Mm -hmm. It is not only the responsibility of the school or teacher, mm -hmm. it is the responsibility of the home, school as well as the entire society to build a responsible citizenship. And we uh, all need to share this responsibility so that we will have the uh, children, the kind of a society we want in future. Right. So, uh, ma'am, uh, we have uh, everyone has got responsibilities mm -hmm. when uh, we are talking about adolescents. Mm -hmm. But there are many concerns by these mm -hmm. adolescents, these mm -hmm. students of uh, especially secondary level. Mm -hmm. So can we discuss some of those? Yeah, we should in fact, because uh, without uh, experiential learning, the learning would not be possible. Yes. It becomes merely theory, right? Mm -hmm. And so we should discuss, let's discuss in case, is it that? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There are so some of the concerns out there. Mm -hmm. This, these yeah. are few, this but I will ma'am go through the example, right? Our mm -hmm. teachers are seeing this session, so they might have seen. See, it is not uh, possible also to give the examples of all the things. No, no, only uh, one, two, two, yeah, two, only two, one, two, yeah. Because peer pressure, we already have discussed yes, body yes, image. Yes, we yes, already yes. have discussed mm -hmm. self esteem. I have picked on the body image issues. Mm -hmm. Right, we can discuss other things also. Uh, ma'am, okay, I mm. have a, a query on career confusion. This yeah. is one of the points. So I, I have an example. Uh, I knew uh, this girl, uh, she took a medical in her 12th, uh, but now because of Corona, the last mm. year uh, went all by mm. online classes and she was not too happy. So she somehow decided that uh, she's not going to do her uh, medical. Mm -hmm. um, as in she'll do the exams, but after that she'll quit. And uh, then she decided that I want to do theatre. Okay. And uh, the parents said that you have never even been a part of the theatre society mm. even. Then mm. how come you say that you can be a good actor? Mm. Even after be taking some of the classes, let's say you join an ST or any thing, any uh, theatre company. Uh, so they were not sure. So that's the career confusion she had. But uh, the parents were also confused that how to tackle her issue at this stage. So, um, Tanvi, yes, I could listen to the concern. The one thing about counseling is, as the problem lies with the child, even the solution lies with the child, okay. right? And you said that uh, the child was confused. I don't see the child as confused. Parents are confused. Mm -hmm. How come she suddenly switched to theater? She never uh, been to theater. She was so good in study. She picked up sciences and uh, she even did well, scored well. That's why she had sciences. So I don't see the career confusion with the child, but the child with the expectation of the parents or the acceptance of the parent, both the thing. Okay. Parents had the expectation to do be to her be a doctor, hmm. right? She was a do girl, right? Girl. She, she was a girl, and uh, she, they also expect because doctor is something very prestigious position. So hmm. my child, right, should be very very elite person, well respected in the society. So they have certain kind of expectation with the child. Because they have kind of the, you know, set norms that the child who are good, they are do well in the studies and they do well into certain field of studies, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why ma'am has also talked about guidance-minded teacher. But if I talk about the guidance-minded, find it personal. If I, as a parent, I want to give the help, mm -hmm. am I really aware about myself? The, the first point ma'am has talked about the self-awareness, right? I'll ask a question to the viewers. A child come to you and they say, that a, a well fitted guy, you know, a well built guy, and he said that this guy has hated me. Okay. And that sometimes, the, some, some of them, not all the teachers, they respond that, how is it possible? You are lying, right? Because we have certain kind of the norm. We all do have. Mm -hmm. We all do have about the things, right? In my, in my society, girls do girls are good when they are doctor they are good when they dress up into certain manner they are good when they talk in a certain manner right mm -hmm. but uh, though we really really appreciate people who are good artists good theater but we don't want our kids to be yes right and we say we are well aware of ourselves we don't 
understand that we have lots of lots of unsaid biases in our mind mm. so that is the one thing here i can share but i can't say ki what was the exactly issue whether the child was really escaping from the sciences then there was a career confusion but in case the child during the covid period has find out that she really is interested in theater she mm. really has a hobby she can really do well she sometimes we find out some strengths in ourselves right then it is fine to let her do a lot it should not be an escape me mode right mm. so we can't judge the situation that's why i said na ki attending is the first thing and exploration is the second stage mm. we can't judge a case just listening to the concern that this is a problem which is which means this right we really have to attend to the child the child knows the best what is the real issues right whether it is career confusion or whether it is escape or whether because as we have discussed a lot about peer pressure my friend has done a lot and everybody in the class are were so admire her so much that she is the gem of the school oh right yes a small star in the school mm. we always have that also mm. na so that's why i also do that right sciences nobody appreciate me they call me they bully me they say you are a bookworm right mm. i feel really bad i i disrespect myself for my strength in that case right so what is the real reason that's what i shared a simple problem may have different reasons and we as a guidance minded functionary require to drill out that from the client or okay. himself okay. or herself mm. right it should not be something acha there is something about career so it is like career issue or it is something the child is talking about the diet so it is a body image it's not like that mm. it might be something else the child has right so we really need to explore the absolutely and mm. many a times mm. students end up comparing themselves mm. with their friends mm. and even yeah. their classmates mm. so that's not healthy for that's them, not it? healthy ma'am you want to mm. add something yes yeah. i want mm. to actually this is uh, actually a uh, my research topic mm. and uh, what i found is that the 79% students career choice doesn't match with their parents career choice okay. and only mm. uh, 21% people's uh, children's career choice is matching with their parents mm. and that to th- only three professions mm. teacher uh, doctor and is officer the ch- children who had these three uh, career choices their uh, career choice was matching with their parents and 79% of students career choice was not matching with their parents choice. so here when uh, we were talking about the basic principles of uh, guidance minded person of mm-hmm. basic principles of guidance that everybody has a freedom of choice mm-hmm. but we need to see that ki how, where are we giving the choice to our students now we need to understand here two things when you said that the career confusion the first of all when the child wanted to be a doctor so th- this might be a choice of a parents to make their daughter a doctor mm. so that, that's why they pay lot of fees and they um, mm. like many a time they thrust their own mm. aspiration on their children mm. i could not become a doctor because of this 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 so now you uh, we are giving you all the facilities so you should become a doctor this might be, might be the reason and another thing is that the interest is taken as a choice mm. now uh, all of students they want to become either singer or dancer or sports person because they like that yes. they see that the people who are uh, getting into national or uh, championship or olympics they are getting name fame money etc and they also want to do that so that is their interest they have not seen the aptitude mm. now we see all of us we like to sing mm. everybody can sing but can we have that aptitude in us mm. Inter- everybody likes it that is our interest but we need to see the aptitude also whether it's a course on whether it's a, a medicine or engineering or singing or dancing whatever matter but we need to see what kind of aptitude we have if we have interest as well as aptitude also for that profession then it is very good to explore that particular thing but only uh, we have seen somebody successful on the tv and the media and we want to become that that uh, that is not the right choice the both the things we have to sit together will will come to that one of the points we have taken we have to come the tips for the teachers and parents which uh, we have skipped that uh, slide in that the one of the point is that the uh, confusion and conflict with the parents is bound to happen
So this uh, actually tips for the uh, teachers and parents were there that listen attentively we have seen that empathetic etc that also we have seen. But here we need to see that the understand that it is okay to have an argument. We not, uh, uh, in our society what we do, we do not allow our children to be uh, opposite of our understanding or opposite of our, of our view. We force them, whatever the views we have, we force them. Mm. But we need, we, this is a very important uh, skill actually, actually for the conflict, conflict point resolution, added, yeah. conflict resolution mm. and conflict management. This is the skill which is very, very important. Yeah. And uh, we need to encourage that in the students. We need to have a healthy discussion and dialogue and argument at home so that the child learns. Because life is not easy at every step we have to have this opposite perspective in our society. So we have to deal with that. Yes. So nowadays when we say that the most of the children are uh, leaving their jobs in one or two years, that is the major reason. Mm. Because we have not allowed them to face any conflicts du during their mm. school time mm. at home. And, and this there is, very is a easy. saying which says that it is okay not to be okay. Yes. yes. And we really have to teach uh -huh. to our kids also. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. this actually uh, whether it is a medicine or whether it is a dancing mm -hmm. or singing mm -hmm. whatever you are saying, mm -hmm. the parents and child has to sit together mm -hmm. and then you need to see ki what are the aptitudes you have, what is the interest you have, what your future demands, what we like, both should and sit ma together. I really want to then, add something over here as yeah. ma'am is sharing that that is why counselling requires a special training, mm -hmm. right? You are training, being trained as a guidance functionary, but uh, in, as an intervention, you can send them to the counselor, mm -hmm. to a career counselor. As ma'am has shared, many of the teacher might not be aware about the aptitude yes. testing yes. and yes. the interest testing. So that's a very important point ma'am has shared that mm -hmm. it requires different kind of the interventions. Mm -hmm. I might, and that is also self-awareness. I might not be trained into that. I might not have those kind of the strength to deal with this kind of the issue. आजकल वो ट्रेन चल रहा है ना जो आपको अच्छा लगता है वो करो अच्छा लगता है मतलब क्या when you see the media and you like it that is not your attitude and that's why the major failure is coming we need to have interest as well as aptitude also and then that is the case also has been given in the module itself the child is interested in 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 being an engineer but has low score in physics right that is where career confusion and he choose accountancy that's already been given in the module जैसे मैम ने बोला ना if you are interested that doesn't mean that the child has an aptitude but we can't judge it just by looking at the score there is particular test into that yes so is that the reason there are certain tests schools conduct where they have to you know write down their qualities and interest and hobbies yes the department has also developed the tamanna and it is in most of the schools now we are working on developing online also, mm -hmm. but that is a very good test developed by that. There are mm -hmm. other uh, tests also in the uh, market mm -hmm. available, but uh, this is the one which our department has developed, Tamanna, which is mm -hmm. there on our mm -hmm. NCRT website also. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. So, um, ma'am, we have discussed the process of mm -hmm. uh, guidance already. Can we discuss the types of uh, guidance? Yeah, we have briefly touched about that, mm -hmm. that there are different types as ma'am has already mm -hmm. talked yes. about. A yes, case of the career yes. guidance side, yes. vocational guidance, we have mentioned it over here. Educational guidance where all the issues and concerns related to academic issues, academic challenges, right? Yes. A child might have fully awareness that uh, the, person, the child is doing poorly in the particular subject, yes. but not have efficiency to deal with the problems or the study skills or with some concepts in fact. So the child will go to the educational guidance and uh, then vocational guidance. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, would you like to highlight about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Actually, uh, in okay. educational guidance, we ask the mm -hmm. students, uh, we help the students for uh, choice of a stream, mm -hmm. choice of an institution. Mm -hmm. We provide them information about the different educational institutions. In vocational like career confusion we have discussed, we provide them the guidance on if you have this interest, if you have this aptitude, what kind of a careers you can choose to. We never say that ki you have this aptitude and this interest, that's why you should become an engineer. No. 
what we do? We uh, try to help them identify their interests. We mm. help them to identify their aptitude. Mm. And then we say that okay, now this, these are your strengths, these are mm. your weaknesses. Now you explore mm. and decide whatever mm. you want mm. to do. So ma'am, can we say that uh, issues pertaining to career awareness, career confusion, and career exploration all comes under the vocational guidance, right? Yes, anything yeah. related mm. to job mm. and career or occupation, mm. it comes under vocational mm. guidance. And personal, social, like whatever mm. the concerns we are seeing, na? all mm. those concerns which the children face, mm. uh, that is this peer pressure. We have seen that peer pressure is positive as well as negative also. Mm. Then body image issues, uh, career uh, procrastination. Because, uh, because of all this internet and uh, social media, uh, most of the children say no, uh, not now, after some time, not now, after some time. So ma'am, so, I can see even in this slide, the above issues are about personal, social, in between vocational and in the end, this is about educational yes, conferences, uh -huh. right? Lack we can of, say that. Lack right? of concentration, hmm. examination stage, hmm. slow mark. Hmm. So this can be educational hmm. guidance. Now this process of guidance, you have explained it very nicely. Yes. Hmm. Then uh, should we say that, uh, discuss now counseling in the school? Yes, please. Right? Hmm. Uh -huh. Hmm. Yes, uh, now here we have seen guidance is uh, helping the child to recognize and realize his potential to the fullest mm -hmm. so that he becomes a happier person in the society. Mm -hmm. Now in the counseling there is a difference that this mm -hmm. help is provided by the mm -hmm. competent and knowledgeable person. Most of the time it should have a trained person that counselor who is competent and knowledgeable assists the client to learn, understand and pursue realistically defined mm. goals. Mm. Now this is very important because the goal is realistically defined. It is not stated or uh, mm. not selected by somebody else. This The goal is selected by the child itself and that too realistic because we say that in a career uh, development theories that uh, mm. in the childhood the child has the fantastic uh, uh, ideas of their goal. Mm. But when the child becomes adolescent, the real uh, for example, uh, many of the children, they want to become an uh, engineer mm. or doctor, Tanvi. Mm. Yes. Ma yeah. So mm. till 10th standard, no child will say that ki I want to become a teacher. Mm. Till 10th, everybody says that I want to become a doctor or engineer. Mm. Because in the society, nobody wants that child to say that he wants to become a teacher. Mm. But as soon as the 10th board the examination mm. is over, the result is out, the child understands that I am not able to get the admission in the science team. Yes. And that is the realistic defining of the goal. Mm. And when the child in 11th standard says that I want to become a teacher, then the, it is acceptable by the society. Mm. Even then it is very difficult for the parents and society to accept that the, the person wants to become a teacher. Mm. It's very difficult for them to accept mm. because there is uh, against the status the stereotypical status in the society. So, so the, the counselor helps to... Realization comes to every child in, in during this phase. Yes, the, the, there are stages given in our career development uh, theory also. Mm -hmm. So when the child is at the adolescent, now, now secondary is 8, uh, 9, 10th, 11th and 12th. Mm -hmm. So to, uh, by the time the child is in 9th, lot of realization the child already has. Okay. Because mm -hmm. when the parents are saying that ki, you want to become a doctor, the child is in ninth, the child knows that I will not be able to make it, but mm -hmm. he doesn't have the courage to say that no, I can't. Mm -hmm. But the result is out, then the parents have to accept. So that is that the counselor uh, has the, uh, counselor mm -hmm. is a competent. First of all, the counselor is a skilled, competent and knowledgeable person and that person provides the help to the child. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And in uh, the client becomes happier, healthier and productive person in the society mm -hmm. by the help of that knowledgeable and trained person. In the guidance, what we are saying, it can be given by a teacher who is guidance minded. Mm -hmm. But here in a counselor, we are saying that the person has to be competent, knowledgeable and the, well -trained. If, it, huh, mm -hmm. if it is uh, well trained, it's a good thing. So this is the difference between the guidance and counseling. And uh, we'll see the goals of a counseling. Now here there are certain goals of a counseling like it helps to facilitate the uh, behavior change. It helps to resolve the client's problem. Now here see in the guidance what is happening, we are giving them the uh, guidance uh, uh, in a group also. It can be preventive, it can be developmental, it can be remedial also. But the counseling is remedial and the, the uh, 
child who is having any problem or any we do not use the word problem actually, we use the word issues. So, the competent person helps to resolve the issues of the children and enhancing clients effectiveness and ability to cope with the life's problem, promoting decision making, empowering the client to develop his or her potential to cope with life. There are also certain processes the same with the um, uh, guidance only, but here we focus on rapport building. Mm. Rapport building means we relationship building, mm. because we are discussing with the issues of the child, so, so child does not open up unless we have a trusting relationship with the client. So, the first step is the rapport building or relationship building, then we uh, check for the problem, different ways of uh, uh, techniques uh, using, we assess what kind of a problem the child is having. Then setting the goal, which is the most important and which is the more uh, hurt creating uh, issue for the child, then we prioritize that way and then we focus on that. And then we decide on the techniques, which kind of a techniques we will use for the child to resolve that issue. So, it can be just simple like writing of diary or writing uh, autobiography or uh, uh, other techniques like uh, cognitive behavior therapy like this kind of a things uh, techniques we can use. Then the termination, the after uh, providing that intervention when the child is stable enough, then the termination is also uh, done uh, uh, nicely, it is not done abruptly and the child is given the assurance that whenever you need me, I will also be uh, there and the child, uh, we, we see that the child has become independent. Mm. We uh, since the beginning itself, we see that the child does not depend on the counsellor all along and we see mm. that, see that the child becomes uh, uh, independent for taking his decision. Mm. And then sometimes the follow up is also done, the, when the, the child is, uh, uh, want, uh, child is in need of help, he calls the counsellor, we are uh, available to them, but this is the uh, process of uh, mm. counselling. Now, when I was saying this empowering the client to develop his or uh, her potential for coping with the life, so students should be basically help uh, in developing their self view as well as world view. Dipmala madam, we were talking about this, so self view and world view makes a lot of difference. So when we say that I am okay, but you are not okay. So, when I am okay, you are not okay, means naturally the anger will arise. And I am very close, yes. I am not open. Yes, minded. I am not open. Uh -huh. So, this uh, uh, when we say that I am okay, you are not okay, means uh -huh. the other, you are, you cannot be happy. Uh -huh. And always that kind of a uh, thinking will uh -huh. give you the uh, anger. Uh -huh. Similarly, when I say that I am not okay, but you are okay. Two sticks, so, two people fighting, yes. right? <laughs> so, uh, the, I will have a low uh -huh. self-esteem. Uh -huh and then I will not participate mm -hmm. and I will be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. The next is, I am not okay, you are not okay. okay. So, the entire so world one is… one was different than that. Second was, I am not okay, you are okay. Okay. That means, okay. I have a low self-esteem. Okay. okay, then this is this. Then it is withdrawn. Yes. I, I missed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then next is, I am First not okay, mistakes. you are also uh, not okay. Then the two all, people fighting with each other. The, all the all the world is like that, so, mm -hmm. so much of depression. So, mm -hmm. we need to develop this kind of uh, attitude among the student that mm -hmm. I am okay, you are okay. Mm -hmm. As a teacher also, we need to have, we need to have this kind of attitude, mm -hmm. I am okay, you are okay. And it is very because difficult, but ma'am, right? It is no, required but lots it, of It is work. very important mm -hmm. because when the child is saying something in the classroom, the mm -hmm. child has seen it somewhere or experienced it somewhere or listened somewhere. So, uh, uh, immediately whatever mm. the child is uh, sharing in the classroom, teacher has to listen to that, mm. ki, yes, I am okay, you are okay, because nobody speaks uh, wrong thing purposely. Mm. The child has uh, seen it somewhere, experienced it somewhere, so this is the responsibility of the teacher mm. that to deal with that issue what the child is facing with. Mm. So, so, as a guidance minded person is the one who mm. adopts the fourth yes. attitude, right? Yes, the, the teacher. Mm who wants to be a successful guidance minded teacher, uh, this is a must approach for the teacher that yes, I am okay, you are okay and that world is okay. So, gradually our student also will become I am okay, you are okay. Yes, this happens. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, are there any limitations in counselling? 
Yes, of course, my personal limitations we always have and ma'am has already pointed out in the beginning that it's it's okay we have limitation but we require to be aware about it right okay. it's we all have limitations mm. and right i am here sitting here but i also have limitations mm. right it might be in my training it mm. might be in my skills or it might be that i personally have undergone some emotional trauma that uh, this kind of the cases i can't handle mm. right these, there are various limitations into the counseling cases, okay. right? And uh, the mm. thing is, we really require to be aware about this thing. And uh, in case I am aware about it, it is okay to refer to the child. It's okay not to deal with the, that kind of the child if I have those kind of the limitation. In the, otherwise, I will harm the case, okay. right? Rather mm. than helping, rather than healing, I, I might ha harm. Mm. And that is okay it is not like i am being judgmental about myself right we are teaching the teachers that not to be judgmental with others but we are don't have to be judgmental with mm. others ourselves also True. right right actually we have instead of calling it limitations we should call it as a challenges Challenge, because yeah. in this yeah. school na, in the mm. most of the schools there are no trained counselors mm. the teacher has lot of work to mm. complete yes. and the counseling is not so welcome in the schools mm. because this is a, a taboo the uh, um, lots of stigma yes, yes. parents yeah. and students do not want to go to a counselor because uh, I say uh, the children are called mad. Hmm. counselor ke paas? And the uh, teachers also are not willing to send the child to the hmm. counselor. Hmm. But all those said and done, whether you call it as a limitation hmm. or challenges, hmm. but we have to take it forward hmm. because uh, out, uh, after this COVID-19, this is this has become the necessity of the school. Right to provide right. the counseling services right. in their school. We accept so our some physical man. illnesses, yes. right? We accept our physical challenges, but we don't accept that we can feel, even mind is a part of the body. It, is. it, it also faces challenges, right? Mm. It's a stronger part rather. Yeah. Yes. We need to face mm. that those challenges mm. and we have to accept those challenges mm. and put put our foot down. Mm. We know our schools require a counsellor, our children require counsellor's help. We need a school mm. counsellor and that needs to be taken. Mm. Now I think Deepmala Madam, our portfolio activity would you like to say? Yeah, uh, sure. before we go to the activity, we have received a question mm. and this is very similar to what you said mm -hmm. because we don't have counsellors in the school, um, we have this uh, viewer and uh, he's asking how can we overcome the problem of career guidance and counselling as there are no permanent counsellors in the schools. See the issue mm. is not about permanent or temporary, right? Mm. If In case they don't have a counsellor as ma'am has already suggested that they should have to put their foot down, mm. right? It's not right ki in case I don't have the counsellor, then I become the career counsellor. Mm. In case that is not possible, then uh, teachers can seek the training. Our department mm. in itself offer a guidance program for the teachers, mm. right? That is a unique model for the teacher counsellor, right? Mm. So they can Refer seek that, that. They can seek training. Why not? Well, the teaching is not the end of the world that I become a teacher now. My only job is to teach the students. I should also grow myself. Right, in training. every career, yes. yes. Uh, training, the gradually they will be deputed and mm. they can take the trick. But every teacher, what the te they, they can do, whether it's a language teacher or a science teacher or social science teacher, mm. because we want our children to be hundred, get the hundred percent result, mm. and we want more students to take our subject. Mm. So every teacher should be aware about ki what are the job options available in their subject. Because we have become a teacher because we were not knowing the other options available at that time. Mm -hmm. If I take the physics, for example, in the model you have given, we have given the example of physics. Mm -hmm. But many students do not want to take the history or geography because they are not aware about the job opportunities in that subject. Mm -hmm. So whenever we do this diploma course or any training program, we encourage teachers to identify at least in your subject, what kind of a training institutions, what kind of a job titles are available, mm. you have to make it list. Mm. And when the child is going in the ninth standard, you have to tell them, okay, if you take geography, these these are the courses available, these mm. are the universities and these kind of a jobs you, you will be getting. Mm. So this kind of a database, every teacher should produce. Mm. Sub, uh, every teacher should have this data, whether it's a language, there are many options in the languages. Uh, similarly, for the competitive examination for the railways is the uh, biggest recruiter, mm. defense, army, mm. aviation, mm. 
uh, teaching institutions, mm. the competitive examination, mm. staff selection commission, mm. uh, UPSC, Union Public Service Commission, the, these kind of, uh, all the states also have that Maharashtra Public Commission, mm. UPSC, mm. for all the states have. So the teachers mm. should be well aware about these career opportunities for the children. Mm. Because even if you have, uh, how long you will wait to counselor mm. to come and teach your uh, children and guide mm. the children. The teacher can do this. And mm -hmm. the most, uh, the immediate thing you can do is that to we have the national career portal which is run by the mm -hmm. Ministry of Labor and on that uh, e even now also there are 60, 70 jobs available right now also. Mm -hmm. okay. So the teachers should be aware about ki, uh, what kind of a job opportunities mm -hmm. are available and they should make mm -hmm. the database at least for their own subject. Mm -hmm. That will help the schools and students mm -hmm. uh, for uh, uh, mm -hmm. taking the decision about the career choices. Mm -hmm. And Tanvi, one important point I want to add here to the question you asked, right? Yes, yes it is the question about the career counselling. Mm. But there might be other issues all the children are facing, right? Mm. There is no school where there are no challenges, right? right. Uh, so in case there are no counsellors, there are free helpline services, even NCRT is running a free helpline services where they can refer that, their child yes. and give the number to the child. Teachers should have this kind of the details with themselves, right? And other organizations are also offering during, specifically during COVID time. Mm. This kind of the help services have increased a number of times, right? right, right. So they should have this kind of the contacts with us themselves, right? Teachers ke paas And even our live sessions. Our live sessions. And that. in case of individual counseling, our national helpline we are running, right? Yes, yes. So they should. So uh, uh, I hope uh, the audience yeah. member who has asked this question, mm -hmm. you've got uh, certain mediums through which mm -hmm. you can reach the solutions if you are looking for a counsellor for any student. So there are many ways and uh, the government of India, they have uh, conducted various ways through which you can seek the solution. Mm -hmm. So um, we are towards the end of the session. Mm -hmm. We have got last five minutes left. Ma'am, can we do the uh, portfolio mm -hmm. activity? Yes, the parliament would you like to explain? Yeah, ma'am, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Then the portfolio activity, they have been given a question where they have to visualize themselves, okay. right, as a 10th class, 10th grade, as mm -hmm. my, far as I remember, 10th mm -hmm. grade students, right? And they really have to, ma'am, can we see the mm -hmm. slide? Yes, yes. I'm trying. So that I'll actually, I don't recall the name of the class. It was 10th class. Last, last, last slide. Class. So, a uh, the activity is for all the viewers mm -hmm. and yes, uh, yes, they can yeah. do class this activity at home. Huh. The teacher of the class 10th, right? Yes. So class 10th, as I we all know, it's a very important class and mm -hmm. students have lots of pressure. So the students of the class are worried about their fate, mm -hmm. future. We already have talked about the qualities of the guidance minded personnel. Now based on the understanding of the module, after reading through the module and, and listening to the session, they have to hide, list out, jot down the qualities they require to function as a guidance minded personnel, right? Second, they have to prepare strategies to help the students in their class, right? There are different students, I said, and there are a number of problems. So they have to pick some of them and have to detail in detail. It's not something that they have write the points, career confusion or self-esteem. It's not like that. Mm. They have to really prepare the strategies in the details based on the process of the guidance we have talked, attending, exploring, right? Mm. Goal setting, what kind of the goals they will set and what kind of the interventions they can plan for those students. So mm. they have to prepare these kind of the strategies to help those students in the class. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, hmm. ma'am, we have received a very uh, good compliments actually hmm. for the entire session, especially hmm. for you, uh, you both uh, that uh, people are saying that uh, good tips for all the teachers, for all the learners, they're suing, they're saying uh, it's a very useful and helpful information you just passed it on. So thank, thank you. you so much. Many of uh, the audience members have thanked you for everything. So is there anything, any last message you have for our learners? Yes, ma'am. Ma mm. <laughs> uh, here actually I would like to say that ki, uh, when we want to eat mango mm. or we want to have a mango in our garden, so we plant a seed, we nurture it, we put it in a good soil, mm. we see that it is getting uh, sunlight every day, we put the nutrients, every day we say that, uh, see that ki how much it has grown, 
is it growing properly or not we put a fence around it so that it should not be uh, eaten by the uh, goats or anything we always protect it and uh, when it grows after 2 3 years when it grows then if it is a month of a december and we want that ki i i should have a mango mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. we will not get it mm-hmm. we have to wait it till april or may for getting the mangoes mm-hmm. so there are certain processes and patience and persistence is required for something to mm-hmm. get so similarly our children also they are very curious very cute when they go to the preschools mm-hmm. we see that they are so innocent they don't want to go out of the uh, house they want to be at home in the four walls mm-hmm. they want to be in a uh, lap of the mother they want to don't want to go out but when the child goes to the 9th and 10th the child doesn't want the mother they want to be with the peer so we need to find out ki why it is happening what kind of a bonding is missing what kind of a nurturing is missing our soil is good whether the sunlight the child is getting sunlight whether the child is getting caring whether the are we giving them the pace for growth are, are we not expecting prematurely many things so these are the things it is just like a growing a tree that child if we want a fruits from that child there is a certain time required for that growth mm-hmm. certain nutrients required to be given and it will give the fruits at the right time so we need to have the patience persistence and continuous uh, love and compassion and unconditional positive regard for our child mm-hmm. to get the food fruit the kind of a fruit we are expecting Absolutely. so i actually request all our teachers and parents to have that love care compassion mm-hmm. patience persistence and con- unconditional acceptance and positive regard for our child so that one day we will get the child the way we want right so uh, after nurturing i think the parents can say ki na hamara khota sikka kaam aa hi gaya nahi sikka kabhi khota nahi hota hai bachcha kabhi khota sikka nahi sikka nahi hota hai thank you so much ma'am for this wonderful discussion beautiful example and uh, yeah. i've i've learned a lot uh, in this entire discussion and hope uh, you know our students our teachers and everybody who was watching this session uh, they too have similar uh, feelings like i am having and uh, thank you so much ma'am once again for thank being here thank you thank, thank you thank, thank you, you. thank you to all the uh, viewers you saw this session and uh, you learned a lot i just want to add one more information that if you want uh, these courses uh, at your end then you can visit the deeksha platform and these courses are available over there you can understand a lot more about them and uh, also if you have missed this particular session or our earlier sessions of nishtha 2.0 for secondary level then you can watch it again on our youtube channel ncert official they are all uploaded over there and uh, tomorrow we'll come back with the hindi version of the same topic which is understanding secondary stage learners so do come back at the same time which is 5:30 pm on uh, ncert official our youtube channel and various pm e vidya channels as well so uh, i would like to take a leave of you take great care and uh, stay happy stay healthy and yes get vaccinated as well namaskar <laughs>